2001 to 2004 was when I was writing Tomata from age 18 straight out of high school to 21 in this here room uh, which is at my parents' house in Perth. Tomato was a very drawn out process. We did it uh, in about eight different studios. We set out a pre-production sort of phase where we'd take the songs from Drew's bedroom on his crazy cool letter pro software and we got it back into Pro Tools and set it all up at my parents' house in a, in a jam sort of situation where we could work on the songs and fill in all the gaps and basically you know, get really prepared and ready uh, to walk into the studio. We did the drums in a, a very cool little studio uh, here in Perth called Planet Studios, uh, which no longer exists. Uh, it was burnt down, not our fault. Happened after we left. Now we hadn't actually recorded any proper drums, and I was that proper in the sense of real drums for the record. Most of the drums uh, that we had, because we didn't have all the drums either, were pretty much all sequenced and Drew had done that. So he then had the task of having to drum it live in a recording studio. And to be honest, at the time, I think a lot of us were expecting him to fail at that because he was so out of practice, but he pulled it together and got it there. I did guitars um, in a place called Tingledale, which is near Walpole. It's a beautiful area. Metal! <laughs> Metal! Then after that, we came here to do to my parents' house here um, to do the bass, where I spent uh, about I think about a week. Yeah, well, uh, here we are in my parents' cellar. This is actually where I put the bass cabinets. Fortunate thing about that recording process is that I didn't smash any of these wine bottles or else the recording process would have cost a lot more. <laughs> it was a hodgepodge, no, no doubts about it uh, from, from start to end. Um, but I think that adds to the character of it in many ways. Yeah, that was, that was most of it. Somehow we, we finished it. It sounded like a cohesive record. Work with me, Fari, work with me. I think my fondest memories on, on that record are really, I, I think back to the moments that I had individually with all the members recording their parts. The other things that I really recall when I think back to Thermata and, and what it means to me, it was actually just hanging out with these really cool musos and, and creating awesome music in a, in a really special space. It's just, a, it's still a very fun record to play and I've got fond memories of the whole experience and that time of my life. It wasn't until after we'd mixed it and we were at, had a listening party at the indie bar that I, I got to hear the record properly on a, on a sound system and it was with a lot of other people too and I got, to, I got the sense that we had actually done something that I could be really proud of and I still am to this day. When we were writing for Marta I never would have guessed that we would have the sort of effect on, on people that, that we did. Um, as we've gotten older, I've come to realise that, um, you know, from my own experiences as well and what I get out of music, that it's it's my blood and it, it gives me oxygen. And, uh, yeah, if and if we can be that sort of pillar for some people, I guess, then that's just a blessing. Yeah.